What's up? It's Julio Shorio with my buddy Frederick Van Johnson for Pocket Shooters. Wow. What's up? So uh, today we're talking about the rule of thirds. It's otherwise known as tic tac toe, or if you go back far enough, tic tac doe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk about this composition and and is it really something you have to follow? Is it a rule that meant to be broken? How important is it really? And how can we utilize it to be better pocket shooters? But before we get into that, I want to tell you guys to please help support our efforts by going to patreon.com slash pocket shooters. That is how we are able to do these awesome, fun, experimental shows and because uh, we have to give up something. We got to not do work that pays to do something like this. So hopefully you can go there, just buy us a cup of coffee or something, and it would be greatly appreciated. Another way you can help support the effort is to go to school.thisweekinphoto.com and check out the Pocket Shooters course on mobile photography. So you can master mobile photography or at least be on a path to mastering it by all the valuable lessons and interviews in the show. Frederick does an awesome job with all these amazing lessons. How many lessons are there in there? There's, there's quite a few. Yeah, I think there's about 25 million lessons in there right now. I'm not sure. <laughs> we're, we're already into the, the iPhone like dozen plus 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 plus. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a ton. There's like uh, I think there's more than 25 lessons in there, and then you've got interviews in yeah, there and some top pros. You know, and and we're going to be yeah. added. The cool thing about the, the the Twip School platform is we'll be adding stuff to there. Like we'll be adding iPhone seven things in there in the future as new apps get released we'll do a quick demo and put them in there we'll also be posting things into our facebook group the pocket shooters facebook group oh one thing i wanted to mention on patreon you mentioned you're you're about to mention patreon uh mm -hmm. but patreon uh, uh patreon.com slash pocket shooters is where people can go to donate and support the show but our patrons over there also get access to our facebook group over, you know, our because it's private and currently only people that have purchased the Pocket Shooters course have access, but we're also opening it up to patrons that support the show through donations. They also have access to that, which is all which is basically a direct line into G and I to uh, to to chat with us, ask questions and share your work and ask for feedback and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to do some live streaming events right into the Facebook group. Yeah, I think that would be a ton of fun because we have the devices, we have the technology, we can do it. Yes, we can rebuild him. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, this show's about a rule of thirds, man. Like it is. tic tac toe, tic tac doe. First define it. What is it? What is what is the rule of thirds? And is so, it a rule? It sounds like how can there be rules in art? Come on. Yeah, I know. It's you know, it's a general rule. It's basically um on your screen, if when you enable it on like mirrorless cameras, you can see it live. DSLRs, you got to put like a, a piece of glass inside there and kind of way in there in the top with those tools. Yeah. So you're not going to do it, but mirrorless cameras have it. Uh, iPhone have it. Android phones have it. And it's basically it, it breaks up your screen into thirds, quadrants of thirds. So three squares up top, three in the middle three in the bottom. And the idea, the, the theory is that when you put a uh, object of interest at one of the intersecting points or something of interest clear on the top, something like that on the side, that you're, it's going to be a more interesting photo. That's the rule, but rules are meant to be broken. What, what do you think, Frederick? I agree. I agree. So rules are meant to be, be broken. The rule of thirds is, is, I think it's good to start and to turn it on, especially when you when you're first learning about photography. And it's essentially a way to get you to stop putting your subject in the middle of the frame, because that's what that's what we feel like we need to do. You know, you focus right there and subjects right there and you end up like my shot right here. Right. Here's my shot. I'm right in the middle of the frame, which is OK for what we're doing, because it's talking head stuff. But if you were doing a portrait of me, the rule of thirds would state that you want to move me over to the side here and probably down <laughs> about right here at one of those intersections of the third. And that makes a much more pleasing shot. There's a couple things that go along with the rule of thirds though that I want to touch on G and I want you to, you to comment on it. And that's if you use the rule of thirds and you place your subject or the action or whatever on one of those intersections, you will probably get a, will get a better photo than if you put it in the middle, but the direction that your subject is facing 
also comes into play. For example, if you're putting someone in this lower quadrant down here and they're looking off that way, it, it imbalances the image. Typically, you want the subject facing into the image, if possible, unless you're going for that kind of look. You know, everything I say is, you know, is a caveat with a grain of salt because this is art, right? But for a more pleasing looking rule of thirds image, you kind of want the action coming into the frame and not trying to escape the frame. You agree with that, G? Yeah, so you could use it in a few ways. So if, and if you place somebody off to the side, say like, and you're looking this, this direction, right? You're kind of now the eye is going this way and say, what is that person looking at? And then you could put something here or you can use perspective to put something off into the background. However, if you wanted to create some ten some sort of tension or make your viewer a little uncomfortable, which could be used for effect, you could always have somebody facing off in the distance and maybe have all this back here's negative space and they're looking and and he, there's such little space here. It's like, wow, it's really intense. And then maybe, you know, maybe they're like shocked and they're like, ah, you know, and, and it's going to cause tension in the image. So it really depends. I mean, if, you, if you're looking to, to show, showcase something that's kind of beautiful and serene, obviously you may, you may not want that tension, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll say this when I first, I, I'm a slow learner. I believe it or not, I'm a real slow learner. It took me like three years to understand why F stop it was a larger number for a smaller hole. It's like, it just, it took me like three years to figure that out. Yeah, um, yeah, so rule of thirds was the same thing. So rule of thirds, when I finally understood it, I was so stuck on having to get everything into the thirds that for like a year to pull myself out of that, I was so, so I was like, just gripped into that like a vice grip. I turned those off and I would just kind of shoot blind and let things be out of focus just to really break that that habit because you don't want to get stuck in anything, any rule. Um, but it's it's think of it as a guide. I think it's more of a guide. I don't know. What yeah. what do you think? Do you use it as it a, guide a guide or do you it, follow it? Yeah, it is a guide. And I use it sometimes and, and I, I turn those guides on when I'm it, it's situational, right? You can turn them on and off at will really quickly. But I use it situationally. For example, if I know that I'm shooting something and I've, I've already kind of, I know the kind of shot that I want in my head, then I know, that, okay, yeah, then I'm, I'm going to invoke the rule of thirds and I'm going to put the candle right there and it's going to be, look, you know, the other stuff is over there. So you can sort of, you can, you can pre-visualize what the shot's going to be when you have this kind of rule of thirds thing in your head. But like you said, I break it all the time. Sometimes I just turn it off. There's all there's other modes in there. Like there's that little spiral thing in there, and there's there's all kinds of little ways that that you can oh, little grids that you can overlay on your image so that you can, you know, use those techniques to get the shot. But in the end, there's no it's it's your own vision. It's like what do you want to shoot? What's the most aesthetically pleasing? interpretation of this scene that that makes you happy and tells the story and that's where you go these rules are there there's this is the suggestion of thirds not the rule of thirds exactly <laughs> so yeah and the other thing is in our heads just a, a little bit of psychological kind of lesson here is beauty humans in general i don't know about other species but humans tend to perceive symmetry as beauty. So if, you know, you ever look at a beautiful person, like a headshot of a beautiful person, then you wonder why, like, why do I think that person is beautiful versus this person next to them? And generally it's because their, their, feature, their features are proportionate left to right. They're, sym they're symmetrical, right? If, you're, if the face isn't symmetrical, even slightly or, or subliminally, like this eye is bigger than the other one or... You know, their, their nose is crooked off to the side or something. Even if it's a small little variance, it, it pushes them more in the direction of less attractive subconsciously in our minds. Whereas if everything is like right down the middle, it's even, their eyes are exactly the same size and the nose is proportioned and the mouth is right in the middle and the cheekbones are exactly the same. That symmetry equals beauty in our heads. So when you translate that to photography, symmetry equals beauty. However, interest becomes from asymmetry, which is where the rule of thirds come in. You know? So if you put something in the middle, this is a symmetrical shot. Then if you move it off to the side, your brain is, your, the viewer is like, oh, suddenly that's asymmetrical, 
does not compute. It's more interesting. Why is that thing over to the side and not in the middle? I have, I must find out more, right? So that's, that's where you want to start using these psychological techniques and, and just innate, innate perceptions that we have as humans have to make a better photograph and a more interesting photograph. So you're basically psychologically using the Jedi mind trick on people when you're, <laughs> when you're building your compositions, right? G, does that, that make sense? Yeah, essentially what it is, it, it's, it's kind of, um, kind of, it's composition that's also implying a contrast, right? So you have some symmetry and then some asymmetry to be in contrast of each other to um, gain uh, interest, the viewer's interest. And you'll see this applied a lot um, with monster design, strangely enough. So if you see like cute kids movies that have like animated monsters, mm -hmm. usually they're very symmetrical because they're, it's more cute and approachable and say, ah, it's a monster, but it's, it's cute. Where if you see like a, like a all out horror film and it's like, ah, faces all like jacked up and nothing symmetrical about it. And it's a monster. Now it's kind of like, oh, that's, uh, that, that's kind of freaky. Or, you know, Sylvester Stallone's kind of, you know, <laughs> not very symmetrical face, you know, he's kind of become his, that was kind of his thing. Right. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's really part of it's, it's contrast for sure. It is. It is contrast. And you can try it yourself. You know, if you're, you're just listening to this or you're, uh, you know, you're sitting at your, at your desk at work, you know, look at, look at something on your desk, like the pencil holder or whatever, and look at it, pull out your phone, aim your phone at it and put that pencil holder right in the center of the frame or, or your mouse from your computer, put it right in the center of the frame and boom. Now, like we talked about in a previous episode, vary your angle, like go lower and move that mouse off to one of the intersections of the rule of thirds and look at just just that change makes it a much more interesting photo. The first shot where, it, where everything's symmetrical and, and the mouse is in the middle of the frame, you're essentially doing an investigative documentary forensic type shot of that mouse, right? You're just showing, hey, this is a mouse. You bring your angle down, move it off to the side, now you're moving more in toward, more towards the artistic interpretation of that mouse and it becomes more interesting, right? So you can use that in everything, portraits, you know, sh macro shots, landscapes, everything, you know, you're, say you're in Hawaii and you're on the beach and there's one single palm tree on the beach. Would it make sense to put that palm tree in the middle of the frame or maybe off to the side of the frame, kind of arching into the frame, right? So those kinds of compositional things are what, what professional photographers internalize. And whenever, whenever a professional photographer looks through a lens, we're using those, like these probably, these things probably go through the professional ph photographer's mind like a million times a second as you're looking at a potential scene, like, okay, rule of thirds, maybe I'll put it right there, boom, boom, boom. And the motion's coming in, so I need it going in that direction. And then you take the picture versus oh, snapshot and on with the day, right? 100%, man. Yeah, you gotta love it. You gotta love this stuff. All right. Well, cool. That's uh, that's rule of thirds. We're gonna be talking about more probably in in later episodes of of pocket shooters. We're gonna get more into the composition of things, and we'll be showing some examples and and all kinds of cool stuff like that. But uh, I think that's probably enough of rule of thirds for this episode. What do you say? Yeah, totally. And and break the rule of thirds. You know, don't don't get stuck on it. Just don't get stuck no matter what you do. The suggestion of thirds. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nobody rules me. <laughs> ain't the boss of me. You ain't the boss of me. I do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, man. All right, G. Take us home, man. Awesome. So, packetshooters.com, obviously. But um, don't forget to please give us your support. We're kind of like PBS in a way, but one show and for pocket shooters. So it's patreon.com slash pocket shooters. A donation would be greatly appreciated. It helps us continue this effort and you get access for free to our private Facebook group. And it's our, it's like our come into our, our private estate and we get share all sorts of uh, cool stuff in there that's, that's exclusive or stuff that comes there first. And we have really cool conversations. We're going to try to do some live shows in there and, and some other stuff as, uh, as it, um, as it becomes more, uh, developed, but yep. patreon.com slash pocket shooters and school.thisweekinphoto.com to get the uh, master course on iPhonography. And a lot of it translates to Android 
as well. Yeah. And there's interviews in there with some top professionals that are using the iPhone for their work, which is cool. So you can see how people at the top of their game are actually uh, using the iPhone in uh, the creation process. And if you purchase the course, you get access to the Facebook group uh, included. And so, I, would look at, I would look at that Facebook group as kind of like, like Julio and I set up this this cool room. There's crushed velvet, purple crushed velvet on the walls and the carpet and the you know we got a shag carpet in there. We got a little incense going, and you come into our seat. You got to know the secret knock to get in. You get in, and everyone's in there just geeking out about phones and iPhones. <laughs> so that's that's the metaphor. Yeah, we're going to be developing the Facebook group out, and I think you'll see some really cool stuff coming. Uh, down the road, and you'll see it there most likely uh, first. So I think we are all good with rule of thirds, man. I am uh, excited to. Uh, I'm just excited to keep going, man. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I, know. I don't know. I, cool. I got nothing else to say. It's just it's, it's a good time. Yeah, so, it's a good time. Yeah, it's a good time, and it's you know as we record this show, it's uh, it's a really interesting time in photography because as we record this, I think Photokina is going on this week in Cologne, also known as Cologne, if you want to pronounce it that way, Germany. Uh, and it is, uh, they've, they've been releasing a bunch of new things at that show that may be pertinent, pertinent to the Pocket Shooters audience. So we're going to be looking at some of that stuff in future episodes down the road and, uh, and, review, and reviewing it and discussing some of the things that they announced there too. So keep subscribed to Pocket Shooters. And leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. We want to hear from you guys. So wherever we go, go there and, and tell us what you think because the show is definitely here uh, for, for you. Yep. So with that said, I am Julio Shorio and Frederick Van Johnson over in uh, California. We will see you guys in the next one.